Before I begin, I think we should all take a moment to appreciate the fact that we've been born just in time to witness the creation of Space Force. It's been a long time since America last made a contribution to civilized society, so I'd just like to, you know, congratulate them, wish them all the best. Don't fuck this up, it could be really cool, we're all rooting for you. However, it's not the first time America's looked to militarize space, and this particular story takes us back to a time before the moon landing. In fact, this story is closely linked to the moon landing, as you will soon find out. The US and the Soviet Union were embroiled in the Cold War, and in 1957 the Soviets took the lead in the space race by launching Sputnik 1, the first man-made satellite to orbit the Earth. The US were already lagging behind with two failed attempts to launch their own satellites, so they decided they needed to up their game. The space race was largely showboating and one-upsmanship, and one of America's greatest shows of power in the past was, of course, the nuclear bomb. So why not use it again? There were a lot of rumors at the time that the Soviets were planning to detonate a hydrogen bomb on the moon to commemorate the anniversary of the October Revolution. And this would really make the US look like chumps when it came to space. So in response, the US Air Force proposed putting a nuclear bomb on the moon as soon as possible as they thought their progress in the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles would allow them to do it. As such, resources and manpower were pooled into the top secret Project A119. Like, yeah, seriously, they were really planning on nuking the moon. The moon! It sounds crazy, but I mean, like, hey, fuck it. Th that's awesome. It's like... Fuck you, Moon! A team was assembled to study the possibility of the effects of detonating a nuke in space. And you know, look, fair play to them. Uh, when I imagine the people who suggested nuking the Moon, I don't envision the sort of person who would logically consider and research the ramifications and the scientific value of such a feat. Among this team was a young Carl Sagan. The idea was to have the explosion visible to people on Earth, as it would be a great morale boost for the American people. As such, the explosion was intended to occur along the moon's terminator, where the sun would light up the blast and maximize its visibility. So they had to mathematically project the path a missile would take to reach the terminator, as well as the expansion of the dust cloud. The Armour Research Foundation had been investigating the effects of nuclear explosions on the environment since 1949, and so began researching the consequences of an explosion on the moon. You know, what's the radiation gonna be like? What will we learn about the composition of the lunar surface? Of course, as we all know today, the moon is entirely comprised of cheese. The Air Force would go on to cancel the project in 1959 for three main reasons. Number one, they realized, uh, hey, maybe the public won't be ecstatic about seeing part of the moon explode. Number two, if the launch failed, there was a good chance the nuke would just fall back down to Earth. And don't forget, they had two failed satellite attempts in the past, so just upping the stakes was probably a bad idea. Well, I haven't really learned to ride my bike yet, but this time I'm going to strap rockets to the wheels and razors to the handlebars. And number three, the fallout could potentially interfere with future research projects and even colonization. Look, yeah, that was, that was really a legitimate consideration. It also turned out that the rumors about the similar Soviet project were somewhat true. They did actually have the same idea as the Americans and their project was cancelled for much the same reasons. Treaties signed between the two superpowers in the 60s would prevent both sides from sending nukes into space. The Americans were very saddened with the prospect of blowing up the moon totally out of the question and dejectedly resigned themselves to faking the moon landing instead. The US government has never officially recognized its involvement in the project. <laughs> Classic. So how can I reveal all this information to you? Well, I, uh, I just made it all up. Just like my debilitating back injury and my benefits claim. Ah no, I'm only joking um, about the moon stuff. It actually all comes from the aforementioned Carl Sagan. In the mid 90s, a writer was researching Sagan's life for a biography. He came across details of the project which Sagan had included in an application for an academic scholarship, which is a breach of national security, I'm fairly sure. In light of this, Leonard Reifel, the project lead, came forward to confirm the leak and reveal more information. This would lead to a freedom of information request being lodged for Project A119 and the government would oblige by releasing one of the least incriminating papers, A Study of Lunar Research Flights, Volume 1. I like the little drawing on the front there. 
A search for some more papers concerning the project revealed that they had been destroyed in the 80s. Hey guys, so at the request of some of my viewers, I have created a Discord server. Now, I've never used Discord before, but so far I've had a great time chatting with you. So if you want to get in on that fun, I'll put an invite link in a pinned comment down below. So even if you're like me and you've never used Discord before and you don't really know how it works, I'd recommend just go for it, you know, get in there. Unless maybe you're easily offended because there does be some heavy duty banter going on sometimes, but it's all in good fun. So if you can't wait till the next video for some more Cukeser, fucking join!